What is happening, y'all? With the Nightmare Frontier done, welcome back to Chillborn. A game where we can now just relax and make our way through the game without worrying about one of the worst areas. Uh, so we're really, really close to a level, so I'm gonna sell about 2,000 worth. Should give me enough to get a level, let's see. Very well. And yes, indeed. All right, so we almost got skill up to the, uh, the first soft cap, which is good. Um, but next, what we're going to do is actually going to warp the world in a major way. Um, so before we go do this fight, we're going to change out some runes. There is no real um, the visceral attacks. They're just not really going to help us in this upcoming fight. Uh, instead, we could go for... You know, let me just go moon. This is honestly like the safest all around bet. You know, 10% health, 10% stamina, and then extra echoes. Um, I personally really like my... Uh, I really like my visceral runes, but in terms of just like what's the best all round, it's probably that setup we just got on. Uh, and for this next fight, we are going to want more bolt paper. So we can pick some up right here. Probably, uh, that looks good. I'm gonna spend, get some fire paper as well. And I think we are good on everything else. We still got plenty of hunter's marks. Yes, all right. Excellent, excellent. So we are going to not there, going here. There we go, Forbidden Grave. Uh, so this next area is Bergenworth. It's like, uh, I don't know if that's supposed to be German. Probably German, Bergenworth. Bergen. Sounds German. Anyway, let's head on in. And there's gonna be a, uh, a fly man that tries to ambush us right when we get a little ways into here. See him right there. Yeah. If the flymen grab you, they can build up frenzy. It's just something to be aware of. They also drop sedative, which is nice. Let me take that off, put that on. Um, so fly, madman's knowledge. And then up ahead, we are going to hit this. And then summon a friend. There it is. Drop down. Get the younger Madras twin. We're summoning this guy now, and he's just going to go through this whole area with us. Uh, it'll be a lot, much, much easier. Uh, so over here, this is a shortcut we'll get later. Calm down there, buddy. Back up. Damn. That's another thing I really like about that. I'm going to knock some back so you can... Want to get the damage in. Right over here. There we go. A nice little plunging pancake. I was hoping he would have killed the other one, but taking his sweet time. Where is he at? I really want him with me for this next part. Uh, so, after those, uh, so continue on killing flyman, great madman's by the centipede. Uh, first, we got the kin by the tree. Now, we've already introduced you to the kin enemies a couple times, uh, but this is the first time they'll really actually like try to grab you and take your uh, rip your insight. So they do that. Oh God, no, we're both fucked. Well, I guess you get to see what happens. So he'll do this. And while he's doing it, he's immune to damage, and he's sucking away our insight. In addition to hurting us a ton. I've never actually seen him get two people with that. And so be careful, because you don't get that insight back. That insight is gone forever. And insight's actually, like, it seems like we have plenty, but it is fairly limited, because you only get it for uh, finding a boss, defeating a boss, or popping your madman stuff. Uh, and we can use insight to buy upgrade materials, in particular blood rocks, which are quite rare, so you do not want to be losing insight. Uh, that's a door we open later, ignore it for now. Let's say there's a... Oh, hang on, there should be a rune up there. I think I missed. Kill the kin by the tree, continue along for the fly gate. Great man man's by the centipede, sedatives in the back corner, open the gate. Yeah, I did not grab or see a rune up here, that's fine. Let's continue this way. 
Over here we have a great centipede. Uh, these things look really scary, but they're actually pretty easy. Button. It'll shoot fireballs, but its attacks are like really slow. You can see once you get out, it's not that. There we go. Let's get behind it and then we can whack away at it. This is pretty resilient. I'll give it that. This is not a very, it's not a very like dangerous enemy, you know. Like, it just kind of, like, wiggles around while we beat on it. So, not much of a threat. Damn, he came in and just deleted that guy with the axe. Nice short area, right? So, head on over here, open the gate. And then we'll head on inside and the chest over here to get and then we can open up this door there's really no reason to open it but I mean hey it gives you an area to back out of in the middle of the fight um, let's see get the chest open door kill the NPC with Madaris twin helping upstairs is student gear and Henrik so now we have the NPC and we're gonna get Madara's twin just kind of mess her up a bit. And we're gonna run over here and we're gonna summon this one too. Just to have both of them mess her up. It's the student set. Is it unfair to pin her in a corner and fight her with all these people? Probably. But I will not be the one is responsible for that. Alright. Elixir. Let's head on up top. Get some loots. Uh, now, while we're doing this, let's talk. Let me see what's up here. Um, up the stairs for Lunarium Key, Empty Shell, and a Fly Man. Kill the old man, and we can do ROM. Okay. Here's the Lunarium Key. Uh, so the next boss is Rom, and Rom is going to change the world state. He's going to summon forth the Blood Moon, and a couple things will happen with the Blood Moon. Uh, we can continue NPC quest lines. Um, in addition, certain things that we couldn't see before on the map, like the amygdalas and whatnot, they are clearly visible now, regardless of how much insight we have. But the reason this is important is if there's any side quests that you have been ignoring till now, uh, for example, helping Eileen uh, fight the man near the graveyard, or talking with the, the little girl and sending her somewhere, or getting the flamethrower uh, from the dude in Central Yarnum. If you haven't done anything, this is your last chance to do it. Because once we defeat Rom, uh, the world state is going to change. So, just something to keep in mind. You know, better to get it done uh, now while you still got the chance. Uh, that empty shell thing we picked up, that's actually really, really nice. This is a... There it is. Uh, it costs three to use, but it's a reusable weapon buff. So similar to how we have um, flaming paper and fire paper, this allows us to buff on uh, buff on command with arcane, which is pretty cool. Uh, a few bosses are weak to arcane. But anyway, talk to this guy. He's going to point and say, ah, ha, ha. Um, we're going to kill him. Because he actually has a rune, and we want it. I believe his is the max tier eye rune as well. Uh, but eye is good for item discovery. So if there's, you know, you're trying to farm up vials or rare drops or stones or whatever, uh, very nice thing to have. Um, I would say let's spend our echoes, but we don't even have enough to level up, which kind of sucks. I don't think I picked up any cold blood either. Yeah, we're going up to 20,000. Which is kind of dumb because it's hard to find him in this area. But anyway, uh, let's talk about this boss a little bit. So, Rom the Vacuous Spider is kind of a gimmick fight. 
uh, he is going to summon up a bunch of little baby spiders and the the ideal flow of the fight would be to kill the baby spiders and then go after Rom. Now once you do a set amount of damage to Rom or if you just leave him alone for a bit, he will teleport away and summon more spiders. So the idea is to nuke down his little spiders and then get in and do as much damage. Ideally you should be able to do about a third of his health in a single uh, burst attempt. Um, if you're doing really well, up to about 50% of his health, but it's it's very unlikely that you just kill him outright. Uh, he is weak to bolt the most, then fire, then arcane. So you could use something like the flamethrower, but honestly, just using bolt paper on our weapon is going to do more than enough damage here. Um, you can either bring these two along. They're not going to show up until we're actually in the fight. You can bring them along, or you can do it solo. The fight may be a bit easier solo, just because of how uh, chunky his health pool gets with the summons. But since we already have the summons out from bringing them along just to kill all the stuff here, we'll bring them along for the first attempt. So just jump on into the water here. And there is Rob. So I'm putting up our bolt paper, we're going to run right in and get what kind of damage in we can. You can already see the spiders. The best thing to do against these things is circle behind them. Uh, the heads are the heads are basically shielded, so you want to get behind the spiders and hit them in the the fleshy spots. Just for an example, as you can see, we're doing 287. Hitting a head only did 52 there, so big big difference in how hard you're able to hit these spiders. And you don't need to kill every single spider, but you want to kill enough that you're not worried about them uh, basically like jumping on top of you while you're in the middle of fighting Rom. You know, you want a clean window to just get some damage into Rom. Right. Now that was phase one. So now that he's warped, he's going to start adding in a couple extra moves. Uh, Rom can get rid of these spiders, some leftovers. Uh, Rom can uh, summon meteors from the sky, like that. Which are easy enough to dodge, you just keep rolling. What is going on with this dude? Why are you over here? Let me bring a spider over to him and maybe he'll help. Um, he does this thing where he like rolls around and he'll summon up uh, pillars of water that shoot up. Yeah, hey, you dumbass. I think the AI is bugged. It's like he wants to fight, but he's scared. It's so weird. I've never seen that before. Maybe if Rom were to hit him with something. Well, no matter. You can see he'll always kind of go up like that before he does his, uh, his meteor ring, so... Honestly, one of the best things to do is to just keep an eye on him as you're fighting. And don't, don't leave yourself wide open. There we go. There's his uh, other blast. Close one. Uh, one more close one, and then I'm gonna get in and get some damage in. Probably should have backed away, but okay. Keep your your health topped off here. It's very easy to get, um, very easy for these things. Even though they don't seem like they're a big threat, uh, they can overwhelm you and do a ton of damage to your health if you are not careful. Especially because you know you get hit by like one special attack. But this fight is very much about patience. You know, it's just going through the motions. And honestly, the longer it takes, it's not really bad, because you can, um, well, as you probably noticed by now, you are able to farm uh, Madman's Knowledge off the spiders. It's a pretty rare drop, but 
we've gotten two out of all the spiders we've killed so far. Let me let me try something here. I don't know if that's gonna impact his health pool at all, but it's worth trying. I might summon less spiders. Holy. Come on, Rom. So I usually just swing and hit because it's like, I feel like you can't even escape, you know? I guess he hasn't teleported again. Maybe it said he only does two teleports. I've never taken this long to kill him. Uh, just because I've been like really taking my time and explaining the mechanics of the fight. So I always assumed he would infinitely teleport, but apparently you can actually fully take your time and kill all the spiders and he won't teleport away. There's news to me. So after run out to the lady that's out in the distance here, uh, this is the Tumerian Queen. Probably mispronouncing that, but... Go on over there, we'll get a little cutscene, and then we get warped to a brand new area. Now this area is a, um... Oh, so this, you already know this. This is the guy that took us to Nightmare Frontier. But now the door is open, so head on down. Um, these enemies that are coming out of the blood, you can kill him, but you won't, like, kill them for good. Now, you saw that blood explosion? That means they're going to be coming back in a second here. Uh, so this area is filled with the Bell Maidens. These are ladies that are typically, like, PvP-oriented. And she will just continually summon up enemies, so just keep that in mind. we will run back here for a Frenzy Cold Blood. Kill this guy. And then up ahead, we got a lantern. This area is not too bad, uh, but it will eventually connect over to the same zone that we got kidnapped to. But before we do that, for the rest of this video, we have some side quest stuff to do. Uh, so one of the first things is jump over to Central Yarnum, and the guy that gave us the flamethrower with the coming of the Blood Moon, he is now turned into a beast. And with being a beast, uh, it's time to unfortunately go kill him. We get a, a very nice rune. It's a visceral up by 20%. There we go. Um, after that, so there's the there's the ribbon. If y'all want to do the ribbon, I guess we can do the ribbon. Um, we get the ribbon. We're going to go this way. Don't mind me. I'm just, I'm just coming through. Don't mind me. Sexy hunter. Making his way past. So go right here. Uh, I told you to sit, so I'll ask you if you've seen the sister. Um, now you can get a white version of the ribbon. That's all that happens here. So if you show her that, she'll be like, oh my god, my sister went outside. I can't believe it. Uh, and then you're able to quit and reload. And you'll have a, uh, a new ribbon you can get that's just a clean white version of it. So kind of like a, a rather obscure side quest. You know, there's no, no trophy no real tangible items uh, that we get for accomplishing it but uh, you know you get a uh, get a thing Maybe you want pretty white ribbons on your stuff I notice there's no response 
And then if we go all the way down here, you notice a body that went splat with a white ribbon. All right, why am I even messing with you? Just die. <laughs> I don't need to actually do anything with you. You're, you're a joke. Um, so from here, we're just going to pop this to get back. And now we do one of the hardest side quests in the game, but one that pays with rewards in spades. And that is the Kanehurst Hunter. Now, this strategy should work really well. Um, if you can't kill this guy, don't worry, come back later. This is a very, very hard fight. Uh, back in the day, many players considered this to be, like, the hardest fight. It's just, it's kind of ridiculous. Uh, but anyway, so we need to hop over to, we need to go to Grand Cathedral, but that's blocked. So we need to go instead to the Cathedral Ward. And this is the closeout for Eileen's quest chain. Now what we have to do is go fight a hunter that uh, she has been unable to take down. This guy is super dangerous. His gunshots will easily do like 50% of your health. Um, you should notice she's sitting here. No blood today. She's uh, getting ready for that baby. This lady's also fully crazy now. Every time you talk to her, she'll just give you some sedatives. So I have my share of woes. I'll give you some sedatives. And then I know you can get you can get blood from her. I think it's only after you have taken Ariana's blood. Because she gets jealous that you have uh, a prostitute's blood. And she wants you to take her blood instead. But it's, it's kind of finicky. I want to say... Because the thing is, I never end up using the damn blood. So I didn't actually take notes on this. But I think if I use Ariana's blood, I can get her blood. I do know if you use Ariana's blood too much... That lady goes crazy and kills her, and that's going to ruin your quest chain, so don't use too much blood. So she tells you to turn back. But you ain't about that life. So I'm going to suggest you have Augur here. Shit, I just noticed I only have eight vials. That is no bueno. Um, there are some cheese tactics with this guy, but they don't work very well, to be honest. Uh, like, you can hit him with poison knives, and then he has old hunter's bones, so he's going to have, like, super speed dodges and shit. Um, but what I like to do, so if he does poison knives, he also has Chikage, so he can put his gun, or put his, his sword and sheath it in blood, and he'll take damage, but he'll do way more. Uh, what I would recommend doing here is using the auger and trying to get up on him. Oh god, he hurts so bad. Oh god. Like, yeah, basically, you're, it, it's, you know, two hits and you're dead here. But right now, he has the Chicago, yeah. So one thing you can do, basically how his health is ticking down, you get his health to tick down, and then you poison him as well. And then you get him into a, an area where he's on the verge of death. I like using that a lot. Three hits. And this is why we're using the auger. Is that auger, we're knocking him down. And then that's gonna let us keep up our aggression on him. He can also heal, just be aware of that. It's probably the easiest kill. Um, I, I did not mean to get him stuck in this corner, but that's actually, um, yeah, that worked really, really well. <laughs> that works super well. Um, but with him dead, uh, you can also, I think you need to actually reactivate this. I'm not sure. But damn, that was, that was clean. That was super clean. You know what it was? It's because I died on Amidala. And so RNGs just felt bad. And since I died on Amidala twice, it was like, you know what? We're going to let him 
kill the Kanehurst Hunter on his first attempt. We're just gonna let the, let the dude fall into a corner. But yeah, the, other, the biggest thing here is Augur. Having Augur on really helps, because you basically get in, like, your first two hits, or your three hits, or whatever, and then you're gonna knock his ass on the ground, and then you're gonna do it again. But anyway, talk to her. She's gonna be like, my days are done. You know, this is for you. I'll be fine. My eyes grow weary. Uh, and that's basically it. She is, uh, she's done. She's gonna take the extra long nap, but we got some really, really good stuff from her, so we're making our way back. I typically just use a bold hunter's mark, but we're so close. I'll just run this. There's the Amidala, um, which actually, oh my god, I completely forgot to mention that. Um, so, all the way back, um, what was the actual, I'm trying to remember what the thing was, um, uh, Vicaramelia. After we killed Vicaramelia, you can go to the DLC. I think I mentioned it briefly, um, but this is the guy that grabs you. What you do is you gotta walk over to this, and then uh, the hand will come in and it'll snatch you. After you get the Blood Drunk Hunter's eye, instead of damaging you, he'll take you to the DLC. Now there's some early weapons you can snatch up in the DLC, but for the most part, I wouldn't really recommend going there. You'll be in for a bad time and probably get your bum touched. Um, and actually, before we do Yargul, now is probably a good time to jump in and show y'all the shit that is Chalice Dungeons. So, we will level up real fast, and then I am going to show y'all what a Chalice Dungeon is. In the next episode. Not this episode, of course. Uh, but so after doing that, we actually have a really, really nice rune over here. Stamina, recovery speed up. Now there's only four different runes. Uh, Impurity boosts max HP during co-op. Also gives access to some unique summons, so not a bad choice. Hunter, hands down the best one. It's going to be a, a, a big boost. Uh, there's one that increases how much our vials heal for, but it increases them by like 2%. And then there's one that's like a very, very slow heal. Uh, so basically, the hunter sign doing that quest, completely worth it. Uh, it also kind of looks like the, the symbol from Berserk, which is badass. Um, and then over here, we also picked up Blood Rapture. So 300 HP on Visceral attacks. You can also stack these, by the way. These, these are uh, more multiplicative. So if you were to stack these two, uh, you would do the 300 times the 200 here. And... Um, or no, it would be, be 1.3 times 1.2. So you'd have a 560 heal coming in by using both of those. And our character has uh, 1,210 health. So basically it's a fat-ass heal. So something to keep in mind there. Uh, but anyway, we are going to wrap up here. I don't believe we, yeah, we can't get any higher. Um, I am going to check through my gems and see if there's... Anything, anything, no, just the, the blunt and the thrust boost, but I don't like relying on one damage type, so. Pass on both of those. Pick up beasts. What I have in this? There's the radiant, your stamina costs. Eh, oh, sorry, I'm not really using a secondary anyway. Uh, but yeah, so we'll wrap up here, and the next episode, we are going to make our way through the first full chalice set. Um, use the ritual altar over here to create a dungeon, which actually, you know what, let me say that, I'll discuss that all in the next episode, because it makes more sense then. Um, but so we're going to be going through the, the whole first, uh, Tumeru layer, which will include, uh, three different bosses, two of which are complete pushovers, but one which is actually a pretty cool boss and a good fight overall. So, either way, stay tuned, and I will catch you with the Chalice Dungeons in the next episode.